Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. But I just can't get undressed in that bird. Then I've always been so clumsy about everything. I told you I was clumsy. I'm terribly sorry. Do you live in New York? Are you from New York City? Neither am I. I've never been there before in my life. But then I've never been anywhere except Council Bluffs. That's where I come from. I don't know a soul in New York. Nobody. Except Pamela North. But then I really don't know her either. We moved away when I was a little girl. But her mother is my mother's dearest friend. Oh, I can't believe it. On my own tomorrow morning for the first time in a big city. It was all I could do to talk my mother into letting me go. But good old Uncle George was on my side. He said he thought the best thing that could happen to me was to buy me a one-way ticket east and throw me to the wolves. Earn my own living, make my own decisions for a change. You know? I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. But I'm scared, too. There I go, chattering away. You tell me about you. Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's nothing much to tell. I am... Um... What's wrong? I... I can't breathe. What? Here. Okay, okay, help me help you. Of course, you'll be all right. Just a minute, let me get the door for you. Here, there's the Maybe if we open the top of your collar, it'll be all right. <laughs> says she cut an ad out of a magazine and she's sending to England for one of those Chuck Tattersall vests for your birthday. No. Says she's ordering it in orange and black. No, my birthday isn't until Halloween. Oh, now I get it. Orange and black. <laughs> and Pam, darling, I want you to rest more. You do too much. <laughs> That's the trouble with all you people in New York. Rush, rush, rush. To and fro. Fro and to. Oh, stop. And then she says, hmm, so forth, so forth. And, Pam, dear, I can't tell you how grateful Mattie is that you're going to look after her little girl in New York. What? What do you mean, what? Oh, not another visiting fireman. Well, this isn't the same thing. It's always the same thing. Every time we start getting comfortable, someone comes in from out of town and we've got to start chasing around looking for tickets for television shows. Horse cabs in Central Park. This is practically my own cousin. <sighs> practically which one? Amelia. Amelia who? Never heard of her. Amelia Little. I haven't seen her since she was eight years old. But her mother is my mother's best friend. Anyway, Amelia's going to live here. Here? Not here. Here in New York. I've arranged for her to stay at the Washington Square Club for Women. Well, that's better. But just where is this place? I just told you. Washington Square. It's a residential club for young women. 
No, one of those deals where they burn you at the stake if you're caught entertaining a man and after nine o'clock. You don't know anything about it. It's a perfect club for any young girl alone in New York. Maybe, but you wouldn't like it. I know you. to New York. I was beginning to think you weren't on the Mohawk at all. Mother gets so mixed up. <laughs> it's me, dear, Pam North. Yes. Yes, of course. Glad you're here? Very glad. You're going to love it. Why didn't you give that anything to a red cap? Oh, somebody should have told you. Porter! Porter! Is this all the luggage you have, dear? No, it isn't. I... Oh, you gave the rest of it to the porter on the train. Well, you better give me your baggage checks. <laughs> to make sure that nothing gets lost. <laughs> oh, I know it must be terribly frightening at first, but you're going to love it, especially living at the Washington Square. The Washington Square? I've made arrangements for you to move in right away. But if... if you don't mind, I'd rather not. But your mother said... I'm sorry, but I'd rather find a place of my own. That's why I came here, to be on my own. Will you let me go now? Are you sure, Amelia? Well, after all, you won't know your way around. I'll be all right. Don't worry. But I am worried. I'll tell you what. We'll phone your mother. If you tell her yourself the way you feel about it, then I won't feel so responsible. Oh, my mother. I think we'd better. The phones are right over there. Oh, wait a minute. Don't phone it. It'll only upset mother. I... I just didn't want to put you to a lot of trouble. Trouble? Oh, it's no trouble at all. Now give me your baggage checks and everything will be taken care of. Here you are. Of course, it's Amelia Little. I'm so glad to see you, Amelia. Amelia, this is Gina Kirkwood, your roommate. I know you two are going to get along wonderfully together. Oh, yes, the luggage is fine there. Your clothes must be terribly crushed. I think we'd better send everything out to be pressed right away. Oh, Pam, I wouldn't think of it. Let me do it. Oh, Gina, you can. Can and will. First of all, it's much too extravagant to send them out. And, and secondly, I just adore iron. I have so much pent-up energy before rehearsal. You are staying for lunch, Pam. Oh, I wish I could, Gina, but I have all sorts of errands to run. Now, you will relax, won't you? I promise. Uh, see that she does, won't you, Gina? If it's the last thing I do on earth. Honey, why don't you slip into your robe and we'll press out that suit you're wearing. Won't be long now, honey. Do you want to start hanging things away? In a minute. I'm going down the hall. Okay, take your time. George Smith, please. Hello. It's me. When did you get in? I was so worried about you. Something might have happened to you. I can't talk now. But a woman met me at the train. She thought I was somebody else. I haven't been able to get away from her. Being watched every minute. They even took my clothes. Stay where you are. I'll get there just as soon as I can. Critics. Why, that Cynthia Spotwood couldn't be absolutely radiant in anything. She's two years older than Lionel Barrymore. Oh. 
we didn't unpack this one. Oh, I, I think I'll leave that till tomorrow. Oh, no, I'll do it. Give me the key and I will. Thanks, but there's really no hurry. Oh, of course. It's been rush, rush, rush all day. And the least I can let you do is let you get dressed in pe... What, what in the world's in here? Things. The family silver. Oh, you take your time getting dressed. There's no hurry. body of Sarah Steber, 80, a wealthy recluse who is known to keep a fort. I've just had the best time charging. You a size 10? Why, I think so. Did she rest? Well, she had to. Remember I took all her clothes? Wonderful. I knew you weren't up to shopping and I wasn't sure whether you had any cocktail things or not. Of exactly one hour in which to glamorize this girl. One hour? Well, we may be a little late, but we're having cocktails with Jerry and Bill Wigand. <laughs> Lieutenant Bill Wigand, the most wonderful detective on the homicide squad. Well, isn't she? Look at her, will you? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Darling, if we don't read about you when the society comes tomorrow, I belong in the obituary. <laughs> You've been a dear, Gina. Sure you won't come along? Oh, no, darling. It's work, work, and more work. Don't you ever enjoy yourself? Why should I? <laughs> well, we're over half an hour late now. Come along, Amelia. How does it feel, darling? All new girl, all transformed? I feel as if I could do anything. Travel. Go any place, see the world, be anybody. That's the spirit. <laughs> Goodbye, Gina. Come along, Amelia. Oh, uh, Pam. Huh? Could I see you a moment? Pam, there's something you ought to know. I don't think Amelia's well. Now, she made me promise not to tell you, but I think something's wrong with her. You better keep an eye on her. Oh, thanks, Gina. I'm glad you told me. Huh? Amelia? Well, where did she go? I found this child downstairs in the lobby. I nearly had a fit. Now, you stay close to me. Do you understand that this is a very big city? No, I'll get lost any time you want, Amelia. Lieutenant Wagon will find you. Wagon can find anybody. Doesn't even need a laundry mark. <laughs> what case are you on now, Bill? Oh, dull, detail, pain in the neck. Routine, huh? And dangerous. Well, my life's in peril. All day down at Grand Central, talking to members of a train crew. Well, what about? Well, it seems like a rich old lady was murdered back in the Middle West. Had a lot of loose loot lying around. Wheelchair case pushed downstairs. I think I read about that this afternoon. Don't they think it was her housekeeper companion? I think the girl's name is Violet Budge. <laughs> was Violet Budge. You mean she's dead? A girl identifiable as Violet Budge was found by track walker in southern Pennsylvania earlier this morning. She could have fallen, could have been pushed. Would have jumped. So that's why you were talking to the train crew. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh -huh. She was on the Mohawk Limited. Evidently, it didn't make an impression on anyone. Did you say the Mohawk Limited? Right. Well, Amelia was on that train I met her this morning. Well, uh, tell me, did you get on at Chicago? Yes, I did. Well, did you happen to talk to a young lady about your age? Uh, mm -hmm. Slight build and uh, dark brown hair like yours? No, no, I don't think I did. <laughs> Maybe you were lucky. Still, you might be able to help. I'm expecting some pictures. Oh. oh. Excuse me. Certainly. I'm worried about that girl. I don't think she's well. <laughs> Amelia! Amelia, dear! Not there, sweetie. There. The old girl was a wheelchair case. Couldn't she have fallen down the stairs? And if the uh, companion was the shrinking violet type you described, couldn't she just have gotten panicky and run out of fright? The shrinking violet type I described could have, but didn't. No? Cherche Lum. Look for the guy. Oh, there's a man in the case. Well, oh, when isn't there? And this violet wasn't so shrinking. She got mixed up with a, a laundry man, an unlikely name of Hubert Herbert. And after the murder, they split the loot and went out of town separately. Every man landed here and registered carefully in a downtown hotel as George Smith. And when he couldn't stand prosperity, he went out and got drunk. He was picked up a little while ago in the Second Avenue Saloon, throwing 10s, 20s, and 50s around like they were advertising circulars and talking too much. So the old girl was pushed down the stairs after all. Must have really been on the messy side. Jerry, will you stop that? 
Amelia's in a terribly nervous state. Uh, no, no, I'm not, not really. Yes, you are. Can't, can't you see she's terribly wrought up? All this talk about murders and killings. After all, Amelia was on the same train with Violet Bud. Something could have happened to her. Well, I must say you're being a big help. Oh, look, can't we just enjoy ourselves? Tell you what, Amelia. You spend the night with Jerry and me. We'll just relax and have some good old-fashioned girl talk. Hey, Pam. Out in a minute, darling. You've been coddling that girl all night. She can't sleep. She keeps getting up. I hear her moving around. Yeah, and then you keep going in there so she couldn't get to sleep if she wanted to. Honestly, Pam, you, you've been hopping up and down all night like a Mexican jumping bean. In bed, out of bed. Then you dragged the electric blanket off my bed and put it on hers. But, Jerry... Listen, darling, you've been knocking yourself out over this Amelia Little. And, and from what you told me, I wonder if she wants all this attention. Frankly, as I see it, she'd like to get away from you. Oh, maybe, but if anything happens to her, it'll be my fault. Amelia? It's me, Pam. Come in. Come in. I'm going to see that you get to sleep once and for all. What are you doing with your robe on? I was cold. For Jerry's electric blanket? Oh, you must be coming down with something. Well, sleep is what you need and sleep is what you'll get. Uh, Dr. Carter prescribed it for Jerry when he was sick. It's harmless, but, it, but it's very relaxing and you'll sleep like a baby. No. Oh, can't possibly hurt you. I don't want to. Oh, come on, it isn't poison. Just keep you company until I'm sure you're asleep. And tomorrow I'll take you sightseeing. You can wear my new suit. You'll look lovely. Oh, Pam, for the love of Mike. Be there in a minute, Jerry. Isn't this heaven? Do you know there are native New Yorkers who've never been to the top of the Statue of Liberty? No, I, I didn't know that. The boats look so tiny. Would you believe that's the Queen Mary down there? See it? Where? There. Oh. Looks like it belongs in the bathtub. You know, some people get the most terrific urge to jump when they're up in high places. What's on your mind? Brace yourself, Jerry. I've got news about Violet Budge. Oh, you mean the, the gal who pushes people down the stairs? That one. The body found on the railroad tracks after the Mohawk Limited passed isn't the body of Violet Budge. It isn't? Now, I have a picture here of Violet Budge. And she's a dead ringer for Pam's friend, Amelia Little. Oh, no. Oh, Bill. Yes? Pam went out this morning, sightseeing, and, and she took Violet Budge. Sightseeing? Where? I don't know, sightseeing. Oh, Bill, what are we gonna do? Find them. You better get down here and ride around with me. Right. And there's Central Park over there. Sure you feel all right, Amelia? I'm fine. You seemed a little faint at the Statue of Liberty. I certainly was glad to see that guard come along in case you collapsed or something. My, the places we've been today. Museum, Grant's tomb, the UN. <laughs> We're really seeing New York from the top. Oh, there's St. Patrick's Cathedral way down there. Empire State, Grant's Tomb, Staten Island Ferry. No results so far. About the RCA building? Men on their way. Check. 
Well, I'd say that's just about complete coverage. Suppose it's already happened. If it had, we'd know. You know? We forgot to send a telegram to your mother. I think we'd better send her one the second we get home, and we can't get there too soon. That's right, person to person, Mrs. Charles Little. Fine. Uh, thank you, operator. Operator says it ought to take a few minutes. I think we were right in phoning your mother. She should be worried about not knowing whether you're here safe and sound. Oh, I meant to ask you, how's Maddie's hearing? Is it the same or, or worse? Oh, I don't know. Mother and I haven't seen Maddie for a long time. Your mother and you? But Maddie is your mother. She's my mother's best friend. You... You're not Amelia Little. You... You couldn't be. No, I'm not. I'm glad I don't have to pretend anymore. yelling till you're hit. We're doing everything possible. I know, I know. What puzzles me is why you never suspected anything. Holy! Don't let it go to your head, but I'm crazy about the difference. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Lou Landers, produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation. <laughs>